Here's a fascinating integral that was sent to me by my good friend Myers, and it has a surprisingly simple and elegant solution development. And for the purpose of this video, we're going to assume that sigma and alpha are both positive real numbers. And as far as the n parameter is concerned, we're just going to work through the solution and figure out later what kind of restrictions we need to impose on the n variable. So let's call the integral i. And because we see a cosine term being multiplied by an exponential function, immediately we think Euler's beautiful formula. So we can write the integral as the real part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative sigma x to the n times e to the i alpha x to the n dx. And once you multiply the two exponentials in the integrand, you can add up the you can add up the exponents. So you have e to the now I'm going to factor out a negative x to the n term in the exponent, and that leaves me with sigma minus uh, i times alpha, and we're integrating with respect to x, of course. Okay, that seemed cool, but now what? Well, we're going to perform a pretty nice substitution here, where we let x to the n equal t. Now this implies that x equals t to the 1 by n, which implies further that dx equals 1 by n times t to the 1 by n minus 1. Okay, cool. So this implies that i equals the real part of, uh, you have this factor of 1 by n, the real part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative, this here is the t variable, times sigma minus i times alpha, and the differential element transforms into a, oh, I forgot the dt term here, and I factored out the 1 by n anyway, so we have t to the 1 by n minus 1 dt. Okay, cool. Now let's take a moment to actually analyze what we've gotten so far. Okay, so first up, notice that we have sigma minus i times alpha here, which is a complex number that I'm going to call s. So the integral you have has the structure of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times t to the 1 by n minus 1 dt. And you may immediately think Laplace transform. And yes, that is correct. However, before invoking the Laplace transform cheat code, we need the uh, term that I've boxed in purple here. We need the exponent of the t variable, that is 1 by n minus 1. We need it to be greater than negative 1, which implies that 1 by n is positive, which implies that n is positive. So that's one restriction we need on the n variable. We need n to be positive. So with this restriction on the n variable holding, we have 1 by n times the real part of the Laplace transform of t to the 1 by n minus 1, which is a function of the complex variable s, and we're interested in the case where s equals sigma minus i times alpha. Okay, cool. And now if we look towards our trusted table of Laplace transforms, we have 1 by n times the real part of the gamma function evaluated at the exponent of the t variable plus 1 divided by the complex variable s raised to exactly the same exponent as the argument of the gamma function, which simplifies to 1 by n. So we have s to the 1 by n downstairs, and we're interested in the case where s equals sigma minus i times alpha. All this implies that i equals 1 by n times the real part of gamma of 1 by n divided by sigma minus i times alpha to the 1 by n. And we're now interested in separating the denominator into real, and you know, separating the uh, this, thing, this thing here into real and imaginary parts. And for that, we have to simplify the denominator. And for that, I'm going to need the polar representation of this complex number down here. So let z equal sigma minus i times alpha. And for the polar representation, we need the modulus of z, which is the square root of sigma squared plus alpha squared. And we also need the argument of z, which is uh, the inverse tangent of the imaginary part alpha divided by the real part sigma. Now remember back in the start of the video, 
I said that sigma and alpha are both positive real numbers. So that means that this complex number here, this complex number z, falls in the second quadrant of the complex plane. So in order to get the argument of this complex number, you have to take pi and subtract from this, this inverse tangent. Okay, cool. So that means z equals z equals the square root of sigma squared plus alpha squared times e to the i times pi minus the inverse tangent of alpha by sigma. Okay, cool. And we have this complex number z being raised to 1 by n in the denominator. So let's just take the exponent to be negative 1 by n. So this implies that our complex number equals sigma squared plus alpha squared to the uh, negative 1 by 2n, correct? Times e to the i times negative pi by n plus 1 by n times, again, the inverse tangent term. And I've run out of space to write it. But anyway, you get the idea. And we're interested in the real part, correct? So taking the real part of z to the negative 1 by n, we're left with, um, we can write this in a better, in a, in a more presentable way. Uh, but first up, the real part of the complex exponential is the cosine term, of course. So we have the cosine of negative pi by n plus 1 by n times the inverse tangent of alpha by n and we can write this in the denominator as sigma squared plus alpha squared to the 1 by 2n. Oh, there's a slight mistake here. We were supposed to divide alpha by sigma in the argument of the inverse tangent function. Okay, this looks pretty cool. And once we incorporate it into our final result, we find that i equals 1 by n times gamma 1 by n, which can be written using the recursion formula for the gamma function as gamma 1 plus 1 by n divided by this thing here, which is sigma squared plus alpha squared uh, to the 1 by 2n times this, in, uh, times this cosine function. Okay, cool. This result does look pretty damn awesome and I haven't exactly played around much with the parameters alpha, sigma, and n. So let me know in the comments if you get some cool or aesthetically pleasing results by plugging in different values for alpha, sigma, and n, possibly involving the golden ratio or some other constants. Of course, I'm talking about, I'm talking about pi and e or 69. Of course. So anyway, let me know. Let me know in the comments if you find any of those results. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.